Thursday, February 16th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Joined, as always, on Thursdays, except when he's on vacation, the lovely and talented Stephen Wiltfong. Steve, how are you today? Good morning, Daniel. Excited to be back on. Man, I completely missed the Jaden Woodbay commitment. Didn't even know he was going to pull the trigger. I bunkered down for vacation and he set a decision date and a commitment date, and my crystal ball was stuck on USC because I was enjoying the Windy City with my family. Uh, but the the Buckeyes uh, have three very highly rated commits to start their 2018 class as they try and finish with an average rating per commit higher than they did last year, uh, last year being earlier this month in the 2017 class. And what a year it was. If they're able to do that, which is becoming a topic of conversation on the boards, we will once again be uh, extremely excited. I want to go over some guys that Steve can help us with on recruiting. We're still getting to know a lot of these names. There's visits happening all over the place. So let's kind of set ourselves up here. This weekend, you got three guys coming in from New Jersey. It's kind of an interesting trip. They're from Renacocas Valley and obviously Iverson Clement, Kevin Doyle, and Trevon King. They're going on like a whippersnapper trip here, though. They go to Michigan, then they drive to Purdue and come here. And there's a lot of rumors that, especially here, that Clement could commit. That doesn't feel like a trip where a guy commits, though. Am I off? Well, you know, obviously talking to Alex and Bill Kerlick yesterday morning, uh, Alex kind of was the one that was first to tell me that uh, it was possible. So I asked. I asked one Ohio State source that confirmed what Alex was saying, that there's a chance that Iverson Clement could pull the trigger while he's on his visit. It looks like they're hitting some schools that benefit each of those prospects. You know, Kevin Doyle is a a good quarterback prospect, but obviously Ohio State has their guy already committed. And and then uh, Trayvon King's just a guy on on a lot of radars right now. He has a handful of Power 5 offers, Rutgers, NC State, Already, uh, Iverson Clement being the the more uh, the, the guy that has the Ohio State, Michigan, Florida, Penn State offer list uh, on this trip, and, and no question, he really likes the Buckeyes coming in. Moving on, another guy who will be here this weekend that is a name I had not heard much of, Julio Irvin, offensive lineman of Stone Mountain, Georgia, Stevenson High School, that has been a factory of sorts over the years. This is a guy whose offer list is really strong, but does not have a rating above 90. What am I missing? Um, is this guy considered a sleeper? What's your vibe on Irvin based on his uh, trip this weekend? Well, the nation's number 14 offensive guard, number 314 player overall. He's just right on the cusp of a four-star. Is You know, he's got a good offer list, includes Ohio State among those offers, Uh or he did. I uh, see that that's not on his uh, pro- profile. It was on there yesterday, and it's not on there now. So I don't know if uh, someone from Ohio State's uh, Bucknut staff did some refiguring with that. But uh, he talks to Coach Stud daily, um, and uh, or quite often. He's excited to get up to Columbus, uh, Michigan. He's a, actually committed to Michigan a long time ago. I believe he earned an offer at the satellite camp, and then. Reopen the process. So, yeah, he's got a, a solid offer list. And Ohio State's board's taking shape, and, and uh, we'll see where he fits in on Ohio State's board as, as things progress. One guy you've been all over. You had an item on this yesterday. Place Ohio State has had some reasonable success in St. Louis. Cameron Babb, I see some concern from some that he's not a receiver, that he's a running back, that he doesn't want to be in the slot. How tall is he? Yada yada. What's your vibe on that in terms of position and school choice? Well, I think he, at the end of the day, is going to be a fantastic receiver. I think he's uh, one of Ohio State's top receiver targets, if not the top receiver target in this coming class. Uh, he's coveted by the Buckeye staff and being recruited as so. Talking to someone in the family, I, I'm still very confident that he'll, he'll end up at Ohio State right now. He'll certainly take some visits, and, and we'll see what, what happens. He goes to Notre Dame this weekend. LSU's a school he's intrigued by. 
Missouri's recruiting the hell out of him. Um, you know, he'll, he'll have offers from coast to coast. Already selected to play in the U.S. Army All-America game. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. Um, and I, he's one of several Ohio State crystal ball picks I have in play right now that, that I feel good about, and I expect them to get back in the spring. Speaking of Notre Dame, given Bab is visiting this weekend, one, one of the names that's become templated to the BM5 is Dallas Gantz, the linebacker out of Toledo. I had kind of always assumed these Ohio guys were pretty much locks for Ohio State. Maybe that's just my bias. We are well, you typically with... should, Dan. I agree with that. Thank um, you. But right but he goes to St. John's Jesuit, so that's the unique oh, yeah. wrinkle that Notre Dame sometimes has. Um, and uh, I do know that Notre Dame came into the weekend running third, talking to Dallas' family and, 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 and people around him. Uh, but he had a great visit, connected with Notre Dame's new defensive coordinator, uh, and Notre Dame's new linebackers coach and, and felt good about his, his visit to South Bend over the weekend. Um, but I, I still like where Ohio State's at. I haven't heard any different. I, and also I'll be reporting this morning, uh, Dallas may visit Ohio State again Monday, President's Day. Uh, so I believe they'll have the day off of school. So he, he told me last night that he may be back at Ohio State Monday. Um, and, and so I still like Ohio State here, but this is one where uh, Notre Dame certainly has a chance. A uh, Catholic school kid fits in very well at Notre Dame, very similar settings. Obviously, his parents are going to be comfortable with that atmosphere at Notre Dame, too. But I've also seen his entire family at Ohio State uh, at Friday Night Lights in the summer decked out in Buckeyes gear. Uh, so uh, Michigan State, Penn State, some of the others he, he's considering. Uh, but this may end up becoming the, that old Ohio State-Notre Dame uh, yeah. battle for a Catholic school kid out of the Buckeye State. Yeah, this feels like a two-horse race. The Toledo factor doesn't always help when you're dealing with Michigan. I'm not sure how that affects the uh, Ohio State vibe if Michigan's not in it. So we will keep an eye on Toledo. Toledo's pretty close to South Bend, too. So that's just like I said, Toledo makes it always a little bit oogie. Toledo and Cincy, just on the face of it. Sorry, people. You make me a little nervous. All right, real quick here. I'm going to run through the guys. You have crystal ball to Ohio State in this class, and you can just tell me real quick if you feel good or bad about that current flip. Tyreek Smith, defensive end out of Cleveland Heights. I love that pick. I think he'll eventually be a Buckeye, obviously becoming one of the most touted guys in the country, but uh, I think he'll end up at Ohio State. We just talked about Dallas Gant. You do have him crystal ball. Jeremy Rucker, the elite tight end out of uh, Lindenhurst, New York. I, again, think he'll end up I, – I still am not wavering on that pick. I like Ohio State there. No question that's a – a battle uh, as well, uh, but I think Urban Meyer and company will get their man. Adrian Jackson, the uh, outside linebacker? Yeah, you know, he's a name I haven't thought about in a while, but I know when he visited Ohio State, he left the campus with the Buckeyes as his leader. And, uh, you know, Tony Alford's got those Colorado ties, and, and, and so I haven't heard anything different, but right now I feel good about uh, Ohio State there. Christopher Oates out of uh, Cincy, linebacker? If Ohio State pushes there, I think he'll end up a Buckeye. Good job by Crystal Ball and Emory Jones. That was strong by you. Here's a name people haven't heard a lot of, Maurice Washington. I knew you were going to say that name. I I need to follow up on Maurice. He camped at Ohio State and earned his offer on the field. And uh, talking to USC sources, you know, people out in California think he's really good. Transferred his junior year and I don't think played as much or played at all. But I saw him in a camp around this time last year, and he was amazing. And then apparently he did the same thing at Ohio State's camp and left with an offer. I honestly am not sure where he's at on the board right now uh, for Ohio State, but I, I do know uh, similar to Adrian Jackson, when Maurice left Columbus, he, he left uh, with a twinkle in his eye for the Buckeyes. Virtus Brown, offensive guard. Yeah, uh, I think Ohio State leads for Virtus. They've had him on campus a couple times. I had him uh, this past summer and uh, – I haven't heard anything to make me think that, that the Buckeyes don't lead there. Okay, here's an interesting one, and an important one. Teron Vincent, defensive tackle at IMG Academy. Yeah, who's a teammate of Vertis's now uh, down there. And Teron Vincent, uh, no question Ohio State's high for him, but Michigan very much in play there, too. Teron Vincent played at Baltimore Gilman before transferring to IMG. His head coach there, Biff Pogey, now works on the Michigan staff, and uh so I think uh, uh, Michigan very much in the mix for him as well, several others as well. I'm going to go on a limb here. I think Vincent's a Buckeye. So, sorry, Biff. 
Leonard Taylor, um, kind of athlete, tight end type out of uh, Springfield. You just sounded like Michael J. Fox from uh, uh, Back to the Future. Sorry, Biff. Uh, if, if Ohio State pushes for Leonard, I think they'll get him. I don't know if they'll push for him, uh, especially if they get Ruckert. So uh, I know Leonard can play a lot of positions, but it'll be interesting to see where he falls on the board. And the final two crystal balls, Jackson Carmen and Jalen Gill. Well, I think they'll get them both. I'd be shocked if Jackson Carmen went elsewhere. Jalen Gill, again, I think he'll be a Buckeye. Uh, Ohio State's recruiting a lot of guys with similar skill sets, so how many of them do they take? I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that they won't ever have – I don't know if Jalen Gill is a super, which means he has a spot forever. You know, I, I, these are question things that I look forward to finding out as the 28 class develops. I'm learning myself, but – uh, Jalen Gill is the number one all-purpose back for 24-7 sports, so we obviously like him a lot, and I think he likes Ohio State a lot. And He's talking to several schools, Ohio State being one of them. There you go, people. That is the Steve Wiltfong condensed version update on Ohio State recruiting. Lots of visits this weekend, so keep it locked. Have a great one, Buck Cutters. Appreciate it.